Glowing reviews, viral dance routines, and all the makings of a gay icon, Meghan managed to defy the odds to turn her meme-worthy status into a box office hit. If expectations for Meghan were low, a big part of that might have been due to its release date. Over the years, January has become a dumping ground for films that the studios don't have much faith in. While bad weather often keeps moviegoers home, financial belt tightening after the expensive holiday season is also a factor. Plus, with the last of December's prestige pictures going into wide release, it's become a truism that January is the time studios release bombs and stinkers without anyone paying too much attention. But as with every rule, there are exceptions. For instance, in the midst of the January doldrums, Liam Neeson staked out a claim in the 2010s with his particular brand of grizzled thrillers. And while the month is often a graveyard of dreadful comedies and franchise non-starters, it has also debuted its share of influential and innovative horror films. From Robert Rodriguez's From Dusk Till Dawn to the first entries in the Hostel and Cloverfield series. In the first weekend of January 2023, James Cameron's juggernaut sequel Avatar The Way of Water continued to dominate the US box office for the fourth week in a row. However, the number two spot was claimed by Megan, the James Wan produced horror flick about a young orphan whose roboticist aunt gives her an advanced android made to look and act like a preteen girl. Katie and her new robot best friend, nicknamed Megan, quickly become inseparable. However, Megan soon takes her programming imperative to protect Katie from all physical and emotional dangers to its violent, logical endpoint. The film had made a splash months earlier, with a marketing campaign that left audiences confused as to what kind of movie Megan really was. Viewers seemingly weren't sure whether Megan was a horror film, a comedy, or something in between. The movie's singing and dancing homicidal robot had all the makings of a camp icon, but could just have easily been a disaster in the making. It turns out the movie knows exactly what it is, which is a slick reinvention of the killer doll movie that doesn't so much toe the line between silly and scary as dance and twirl all over it. Strong reviews, good word of mouth, and an inescapable online marketing campaign helped put a $12 million scary movie within spitting distance of one of the biggest films of all time. Megan quickly swiveled from being a potential bomb to possibly one of the biggest horror films of the year. Befitting the month of its release, Megan also sits at the nexus of several horror trends that don't always have a track record for quality. On its surface, the film belongs squarely in the killer doll genre, home of Annabelle and the Child's Play series, where children's play things have minds of their own. Of course, this usually happens via supernatural means, but Megan isn't possessed by a malevolent spirit the way Annabelle and Chucky are. Instead, her evil is born of microchips, wires, and humankind's hubris, which also puts the film in the killer robot category. Like the cowboy robots of the original Westworld, Megan obeys her programming to a troubling degree. And like Arnold Schwarzenegger's reformed cyborg in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, she does it all to protect a young child. But Megan is no chubby-faced toddler like Chucky and Annabelle, nor is she really a doll in the same sense. She is built like a preteen maybe just slightly older than her nine-year-old ward Katie. She walks, she runs, she dances, and she kills, all with the same inscrutable expression. In that way, the film also plays with the scary kid trope, which at its best gives us Henry James the turn of the screw, and its adaptations like 1961's The Innocents and 2001's The Others. At its worst, scary kids are campy to the point of self-sabotage, as in the endless Children of the Corn sequels. Most of the schlocky films that trade in the innate creepiness of a child's blank stare don't have what Megan has, and that's a solid, creative team guiding the action. Director Gerard Johnstone cut his comedy horror teeth on the 2014 New Zealand indie Housebound, which he also wrote. Screenwriter Akela Cooper, meanwhile, has emerged as one of the hottest names in horror on the strength of her script for 2021's Malignant, another surprise hit that pulls off a wild premise with style. She has also contributed scripts to American Horror Story, Witches of East End, and the Netflix series Chambers. But arguably the biggest name behind the scenes of the film is horror maestro James Wan. As the mastermind behind Dead Silence and the Saw and Annabelle series, he's no stranger to creepy dolls. Wan, however, is quick to note that this is actually his first killer doll movie, telling Deadline in January 2023, In my previous doll movies, they don't kill anyone. So I said, I'm gonna make a killer doll movie for a brand new generation. Today's kids didn't grow up with Chucky like we did. Megan was filmed in New Zealand during the summer of 2021. Violet McGraw, who plays Katie, was just 10 years old at the time, but had already racked up an impressive genre film and TV resume. 
She appeared as Florence Pugh's younger self in the Marvel superhero blockbuster Black Widow, and as the younger Victoria Pedretti in Mike Flanagan's Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House. Stand-up comic Ronnie Cheng co-stars as the short-sighted and ultimately doomed CEO of the toy company that manufactures Megan. Meanwhile, girl star Alison Williams picks up where she left off in Get Out and the 2018 Netflix thriller The Perfection, building a reputation for herself as an upscale scream queen. I know she's not real, but she is talking and blinking and her face is moving. <laughs> yeah. But the star of any monster movie is, of course, the monster. With her doll-like face and uncanny movements that are graceful, robotic, and feral all at once, fans wondered if Megan was real or a CGI creation. On screen, Megan is performed by a preteen dance prodigy from New Zealand named Amy Donald. Outfitted with a prosthetic mask whose expressions were enhanced by CGI, Megan's creepily soothing voice was provided by former Disney Channel actor Jenna Davis. I actually got her voice pretty quickly in what I wanted her to be like. The film is a co-production by Universal Pictures, Blumhouse Productions, and One's Atomic Monster Shingle. In the years since movie theater attendance cratered due to pandemic restrictions, many studios have opted to release films directly to streaming platforms. Other studios have attempted to preserve the movie-going experience and the revenue that goes with it, by releasing films in both formats at the same time. Megan, however, is a different story. According to Deadline, the film was always planned for the big screen. Instead of a simultaneous theatrical and streaming premiere, Universal gave it a good old-fashioned wide release on over 3,500 screens across the country, which is a major vote of confidence in 2023. As it turned out, the film wildly overperformed on its first weekend, grossing over $35 million in ticket sales when its estimated performance was nearly half that. By far, the moment that captured the internet's attention was a short clip from the film's climax in which Megan pauses in an office hallway to perform an acrobatic, mesmerizing dance to the Scab Brothers' 1979 disco rock hit Walk the Night. Before long, the dance had taken over TikTok and other social media sites, with amateur Megans performing their own takes on the killer doll's moves. By January 9, 2023, the hashtag Megan had racked up nearly 1 billion views. At the film's December 7th premiere in Los Angeles, a dance troupe of eight Megans even performed a red carpet routine to a Taylor Swift song. The dance was not originally part of the script, however. It was developed on set by director Gerard Johnstone, dancer Amy Donald, choreographer Jed Brophy, and dance instructor Kyle Norris. In an interview with 2Fab.com, Johnstone said, You know, snuck it in on the document to see if anyone would say anything. Ultimately, he was relieved that the knowingly absurd scene was embraced for both its spookiness and its silliness, noting, But you're definitely walking a fine line when you do something like that, and you yeah. just hope it's gonna pay off. The wildfire popularity of the Megan dance helped raise the film's public awareness, and other than Avatar, there was little competition in the first week of January for either eyeballs or dollars. But it's also true that the film has received glowing reviews from critics, and this Rotten Tomato score shot straight into certified fresh territory with near-unanimous praise. Early positive notices may well have brought in skeptical audiences, who feared that the film was nothing more than a 20-second viral scene with 100 minutes of fluff around it. The dance scene may not have been in Cooper's original script, but the tricky tone that allows it to exist alongside grisly death scenes is very much present on the page. This is a film that understands exactly what it is, as Roger Ebert's.com said. It fills a kiddie pool with ridiculousness and splashes around in it. While it's more overtly comic than Cooper and Wan's previous collaboration, Malignant, both films are fully committed to their premises, rooting even the goofiest moments in the emotions and anxieties of the character. Megan is a movie about a killer doll, but it's also about the way technological advances replace a human touch, literally or figuratively, and the pressure that society places on women to be mothers, whether they want to be or not. Megan is a center-parted psychopath dressed like a Victorian schoolgirl crossed with a 1970s businesswoman, a four-foot menace whose eyes may be fake, but they can still judge everything she sees, a my-sized Barbie come to life with an ice-cold demeanor and a sassy mouth. Perhaps unsurprisingly, before the movie was even released, Megan was declared a new queer horror icon put out. While Cooper attributed the character's popularity in the gay community to the film's themes of found family, others have a more simple and blunt explanation. As one Twitter user put it, she's a fashionable, murderous doll that does cute dances and says mean Before the film was released, author and academic Joe Valisi spoke to Vox about the character's imagery and her place in a continuum of subverted femininity. That includes recent horror villains like the Barbadook, the deformed mother living underground in 2022's Barbarian, 
and Octavia Spencer's Ma. As Felici sees it, the limitations of sexual expression in a heteronormative society led many queer people to identify with the characters who are considered monsters. We think we can't be Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street, so we'll be Freddy Krueger. We can't be Laurie Strode from Halloween, then we're Michael Myers. They seem to understand like what her energy was, which was the best. After its first successful weekend at the box office, Universal had already begun talks of a sequel. Director Gerard Johnstone, for one, seems excited for the prospect of another visit to the Meganverse, telling Variety, "...there are so many ideas that we had and facets of Megan's personality that we wanted to explore. I totally think there's more to say. But we may not have to wait for a brand new film to get more Megan in our lives." According to screenwriter Akela Cooper, Universal cut a lot of the violence and gore out of the film in order to secure a PG-13 rating. So an expanded R-rating edition may be in the works. Cooper told the Los Angeles Times, "...no shade to Universal, love them. And I understand that once the trailer went viral, teenagers got involved and you want them to be able to see it. There should be an unrated version at some point. I heard it was on the books. Hopefully we'll be able to see Megan unleash her full bloody power in the future."